What is up, people? It is Dave. It is Duncan. Back from Metal Epidemic for another album review. And for this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new album from post-punk outfit Grave Pleasures. The band's new album, Plague Boys, will be released on April 21st via Century Media. So, uh, formed in 2015, after the dissolution of singer Matt McNerney and bassist there's a lot of fucking unpronounceable names in this. Just going to apologise. Unpron- no, 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 no. Valtteri. Hard to pronounce. They're not unpronounceable. <laughs> if they're unpronounceable, then no one can pronounce them. They are Sorry. hard to pronounce. Unpronounceable for Scottish people. I should have <laughs> just added that. Uh, bassist <laughs> Valtteri Arino, short-lived sensation Beast Milk. Grave Pleasures have defiantly expanded on what has been described as their war cry for the eternally doomed with each album seeing their song craft reach new heights. Their raw atomic punk of their major label debut album Deep Dream Crash was revamped and contorted into the uplifting nihilism of distinctly more frenetic sophomore smash hit Mother Blood, ultimately amped up and finessed into the heady Plague Boys, their most mature yet dangerous album to date. Death gives meaning to love, war is the father of all. We must revel in both light and darkness, our gravest pleasures, to know what is to be human, states McNerney. When quizzed on the nature of his lyrics, adding that Plague Boys is about civilization and savagery. The album was recorded, engineered and mixed by Nico Ledonte, produced by Juho Van Hannen and co-produced by Nico. The album was then mastered by John Davis, who has worked with... Everyone from the Flint Killers Orn, to Prodigy, <laughs> yeah, I know. Led Zeppelin, um, <laughs> different John Davis. Um, so we um, we are no no strangers to the great. Also, pleasures. we need the biscuit to save this grip from John Davis. <laughs> um, we have been following <laughs> these guys since since the Beast Milk days. Um, since use your deluge. Yes. 2012. About then, aye. About then. So yeah, we've been on we've been on a journey with these guys. <laughs> oh, um, don't stop believing. Through lots of um, light and shade, Dave. Um, <laughs> just using all our keywords. We might as well get them out, out right now. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So look, we've we've been we've been around pretty much. I, I'm sure he was doing stuff before then, mm. but in terms of when he hit the. The kind of scene with Beast Milk, we've been mm. with them from Beast Milk through Grave Pleasures and Hex Vessel as well. So yeah, we, yep. we've we've been following this dude for a while. We even chatted with him in Glasgow, which That's right, was yeah. one of my favourite interviews mm. we've ever done. It's a cool dude. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think like going on what we'd heard single wise from this album, we were both pretty psyched to hear um, the remainder. The form, maybe a sentence I uttered. Maybe, maybe. But did, did it live up to those lofty expectations, Duncan? Lofty, Dave. <laughs> lofty. Where are they? They're in the loft with the Christmas tree. <laughs> uh, well, there. Keep it safe. <laughs> so, Plague Boys, Duncan. What did you think? Um, Tell me now. Tell me now. <laughs> Is an hour. <laughs> um... This is the closest, mm-hmm. I think, Matt et al. A little bit of Latin for you there, Dave. Thank you. Um, I think this is the closest they've got to Climax. Agreed. Climax being Beast Milk's <laughs> only album. <laughs> um, <laughs> which, by the way, is still to this day an album that I still play. I, do, I absolutely... And it's not because there was, like, Baloo involvement and all the rest on it. Mm. Um did help um no i would like the, the to to give my opinion on this one you do have to give context mm-hmm. um matt aka kavost don't know if he still goes with that name let's use it anyway um has been cool. crafting a particular style of music now for over a decade that mm. specifically with these ventures here he's tapped into um a vocal style that is very much of an 80s era when music was a little bit darker you know it was, it was maybe less of the trodden road it was more of the 
it was more is more unique in a lot of respects and mm. what he's done is he's managed to continue that through almost every iteration of what he's been doing on this side less with hex vessel even though it's still him there's something more earthy about that there's there's something very very interesting about what he does with uh, beast milk into great pleasures i had trouble when we jumped from Right. Um, Beast Milk because that album to me is unimpeachable I think it's flawless from front to back and mm. then you got signed major label here we go here's Dream Crash War Grave Pleasures now and I think it's like maybe about two thirds of a really good album with a couple of tracks that are a bit fillery Motherboard mm. I thought was a good album I didn't think it was a great album um, and the, the biggest issue I have with Motherboard is I find it is relatively forgettable Mm. Um, when I'm listening to it, I'm enjoying it. After it's finished, I, c- I can't remember much of what I actually did enjoy about it. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then we've heard the, we've heard the two singles for Plague Boys, um, and both like earworms straight away, right in the head. Fucking like it was all in, all in on it. And it sounded like there was something a kind of commercial aspect he tapped into. Mm-hmm. Uh, like a very kind of we always go back to things like Echo and the Bunny Men because it's there it's hard yeah. not to it's hard not to kind of lean into that yeah but you're right there was a kind of there was an expectation of is it a whole album of that mm. is the punk stuff still going to be there you know is it going to get darker and weirder what's it going to be like I'm happy to see that whilst this album didn't give me everything I wanted it to give me, it mm. gave me stuff I didn't realise I actually wanted overall. Yeah, I think the right in saying this is the, the kind of most mature thing they've done. I will put it this way, I think vocally this is his best album. Yeah, I think, and lyrically, I, I honestly yep. think the lyrics in this are yep. like poetry. I, mm-hmm. I, I, was, I was floored by how well the stories are weaved. Also, he he has this gift of not even in the chorus hitting like a lyrical stab yep. of like a couple of words that are repeat repeat a couple of times and they're there they're in mm-hmm. your head and mm-hmm. you can't get rid of them. Um, it's still very much rooted in kind of eighties sort of vibes. Uh, it's kind of more weirdly at times more kind of rock mm-hmm. than it is necessarily punk. Um, yeah. but those punk aesthetics are still there in the same way yeah. that something like uh, Susie and the Banshees or Sisters of Mercy are kind of dabbling in that world it kind of exists in there as well before I get into songs that I think absolutely fucking kill on this album um, the other thing I would say is I do love the production on this one I think Motherboard to me was a bit too clean mm. Um and a uh, dream, dream crash was 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 fine, was fine, but it was it was never it was the first thing from climax and climax yeah. production is so fucking great and like authentic and, and grass. But this one has that. It's mm. clearly a very modern production. Yeah. But the the kind of the sims that are being recorded feel more authentic to the era. So yeah. the guitar work, particularly with those echoes and reverbs and all the rest and clean tones sound very much of the 80s. There's a band that I love um, called The White Lies. They're a kind of English... Uh, English, like, Joy Division slash kind of quasi-New Order-inspired... I was going to say indie band is probably the best way to describe it. And they do. They have that kind of Ian Curtis, Joy Division sort of sound about them. I love them because vocally the vocalist has a deeper tone than what the band probably needs and it fits of that era mm-hmm. and there's a lot of what they do of that era capturing that that grave pleasures do but more authentically mm-hmm. so where they capture a particular sound that makes you think all right that's kind of it reminds me of without being like mm-hmm. grave pleasures remind me of and sound like a whole a whole era of music and have captured it really, really, really well. I think the album's greatest gift is that it has a really cool narrative that weaves through it. Mm. This is it's about 40 minutes in length. It's not a huge amount of songs, about 10 songs or something. Um, and what I love about it is that, like, pace-wise, it's fairly stock. 
I mean, mm. it, tempo-wise, it doesn't really get any faster or any slower than what it does. Yeah. Which kind of actually aids it. It adds a real kind of sense of mood and tone overall. And you do feel like it's the sort of album that is the kind of physical equivalent of standing in a like a like a goth nightclub with a hood up in a corner, just doing a kind of little <laughs> kind of swing to the music and, and kind of mm. just not paying attention to anyone. Um, I think everything seems to gel really well on here. I think they use keys really cleverly. I think the guitar work is really well placed. It's mm. Very samey, but it's memorably samey. Yeah. I think the bass work on this, the bass sounds phenomenal in the mix. It's nice and prominent. They've always had that in their sound. Mm. Uh, Drum-wise, it's maybe not pushing things as far as some of their other stuff has, but actually, it sits in a really cool groove. Yeah. Like Behind it, it just keeps the pace like working really, really well. Uh, vocally, I think this is, like I said before, Chef's Kiss, I think this is the best thing he's done. Um, it's in, there's a confidence in this release. That yeah. I just don't think they've had since Beast Milk. Mm-hmm. Um, both singles we heard, which was Heart Like a Slaughterhouse and Society of Spectres, are probably the two of the most commercial tracks on here, weirdly, mm-hmm. which allows the album to be a bit darker, a bit more dreamy, a bit more ethereal in parts, and, and kind of weave through. Whether that's going from Disintegration Girl, the opener, which is a fairly no frills opener track. Mm. it's right down the middle it's kind of almost the finger in the air kind of this is great pleasures this is what they sound like track which is Mm. why heart like a slaughterhouse stands out as much as it does yeah because it's a kind of minimalist kind of almost nightclub kind of swoony croony track it it works really well Mm. um we we jump through various different things but i do want to just lean on the tracks i think are like phenomenal lead balloons is maybe the track of the album for me mm. I think uh, it's between that one and Plague Boys which is, if it isn't already a single it needs to be a single, it's fucking great but mm. Lead Balloons has that kind of Joy Division-esque thing I was talking about before but with this goth tinge to it yeah. um, really 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 well done, interesting repeated lyrical motifs that it comes back to which are not the chorus um, and I love that it keeps nailing the, the, the things in there but it's really well structured um, Conspiracy of Love I also think is super strong but I think all the tracks are, are like really strong I think there are certain tracks that elevate things but their placement on the album is why they're elevated mm-hmm. like they lead into something grand and then the album like kind of shrinks down a little bit and then it builds up to something great, and those placements are are excellently done. Um, I I really wanted this album to deliver like huge things for me, mm. and I'm never going to get another Beast Milk album, mm. and I've resigned myself to that. But as great pleasures go, I think this is the album that I think they've always been working towards I think it's the one that defines our sound Mm -hmm. one which is still inherently unique from everyone else that are kind of doing the same thing that they've been doing but I think they're trailblazing again I think they're a couple of years ahead of I genuinely expect a couple of years from now there's going to be an influx of bands that are doing this just like they were doing before and just like they've done before I I do think it's, it's that way it's a great listen it's a really, yeah. really, really smooth, really great listen. And I don't think anyone's captured the idea of this kind of doomsday, post-apocalyptic, almost nuclear family vibe, mm-hmm. like Grave Pleasures. And yeah. specifically, Kvost as is, is vocalist. I think you really... I think if you take him out of the band, you have like a collection of good songs. Yeah. I think with him being on the band, you have a collection of exceptional songs. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm, it's hard not to gush over it. I, I, I really, 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 really like this album. I think mm. it's, I think it's as close as I'm going to get to what I really want that yeah. I'm never going to get, and I'm kind of hoping this propels them. I genuinely, I think if this doesn't, if this doesn't put them out there on the map and get them the attention that they clearly deserve, mm. then I don't know what will now. Um, I was thinking about, like, I've, I've like, already 
messaged about four or five different people who all listen to completely different stuff mm. that all have interest in the 80s and said we are like but two weeks away when this review is recorded um from this album dropping get it on your your pre-release downloads because you're gonna love it mm. um yeah I, i'm I, 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 it's really fucking good. <laughs> it's really, I, I really, really, really like it. It's, it's, once again, it's an album that feels like it was made for me. Yeah. I'm a selfish listener. I'm a selfish, <laughs> selfish listener. And uh, this one this one tickled all the spots it needed to. Nice. Uh, uh, you were a, you're, you're a, you were a Beast Milk fan, Dave. Oh, yeah. Big and, Beast Milk fan. Uh, um, you've been <clears throat> on a similar journey with me. Yeah. great pleasures i am curious if this lived up to your expectations um i think out of the albums they'd released i think dream crash was probably my favorite um out of the two they had out um however after this release this is my favorite grave pleasure album to date um i think this album for me shows the biggest involvement we've seen from the band to date um as you said it still has that post-punk kind of undercurrent that we've heard from the band previously but they have expanded their sound to now showcase um, a, a kind of even wider range of of dynamics and, and contrast on these songs um, I think I think that partly comes down to the fact they've they've leaned a little bit further into that 80s new wave sound um, yeah. giving you much more space more melodic tones on these tracks both musically and vocally um, if you check out the the atomic punk kind of qualities of their debut and then switch to this you'll hear a huge difference in how they are now approaching their music um this for me has more depth there's there's more layers to this um and there's also a more kind of refined choice of song structures as well mm. on this album yeah, yeah um a lot of the tracks on here have a, a more kind of conventional structure more in line with like an 80s pop song um, at times anyway um, when the, the shooting's done is a great example of you know that, that great songwriting it doesn't doesn't deviate much from the script it just you know delivers hooks um, and plenty of memorable moments for the kind of entirety of the track um, I really enjoyed the, the synths and the keys on this album I think yeah. they were a, a kind of key component of this album um, it's a, again without doubt very 80s sounding um, but they've always had that 80s vibe going on um, like even back in the Beast Belt days, but I really liked that they've they given the synths more of a focus um, and made them even more, almost even more commercial, um, given the album a very kind of British new wave feel at times. Mm -hmm. um, even the way they've added in some of the, there's like little bits of kind of like electronic percussion um, and sounds at the back of the drums. Um, but this, you know, it still has a backbone to it. And um, this doesn't feel watered down or flimsy in any way um you, you you get hints of like i was getting like hints of of 80s bands like um the band called the sound or mm -hmm. or the chameleons which they still had that kind of rockier kind of backbeat of of bass and drums you know giving the songs a pulse and um, plague boys has that you know call it death rock or whatever you want to call it um but it has that kind of very like kind of fist pumping rhythm through it um and, but with that comes also this kind of darker side that can be very gothic and very gloomy at times. Um, Heart Like a Slaughterhouse or Society of Spectres both have that kind of kind of shadowy kind of streak through them, which I loved. Um, I thought the keys on Sh uh, Society of Spectres was mm -hmm. just fantastic. It's, it's such a smart move. Yeah. It could be, it could be on the Lost Boys soundtrack. I was just going to say that. It reminded me of <laughs> 80s movies. That's what I was getting the whole time. Yeah. 100%. You're just living in my head right now. Um, I think... Um, I think, for me, I think um, Matt's vocals, I think I've, I've just... They are the, hi the highlight of this album for me. I think... Yeah. Firstly, I, I agree with you. I think the lyrical content of this album is fantastic. Um, Picture painting. Really is. He's, he's always been very creative with his lyrics. Um, and, um, and and as you said, painting a really, really kind of vivid picture. Um, but I thought some of the lines on this album were just so original and very memorable. Mm -hmm. um, that from that kind of first track, the she's, she's the end of the world in the form of a gun. Like that just, that was just stuck in my head. Um, I get so tired that I'm jealous of skeletons. I thought that was another great line. 
Um, another one which was very clever was um, drops of beast milk running down the valley yes, of the abyss. Yeah, I was yeah. like, uh, nice. Like if you know, if you know, you know. Yeah, thanks for right, It's hard not to hear that and go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Um, and the, the album is just littered with so many really interesting and cool lyrics that, that do conjure up that, that kind of visual image in your head. Um, I think his melodies are just fucking brilliant on this album. Like the Such catchiest they've had, as Grave Pleasures anyway, this is definitely the catchiest album they've done since since Climax. Um, yeah. As you said, nearly every track has an earworm of some kind that will just get trapped inside your head. Um, yeah, I, th- I found this just a, a really, really rewarding listen. Like it's one that you can go back to and just play over and over. Um, just really hooky, um, very memorable. Um, as I said, easily my favourite so far from Gla- Grave Pleasures. Um, it's hard because they've because they've had that Beast Milk album. Yeah, it's really difficult. It's a different band. This is the I know. It's, the, it's, I know. The hard, it's the really really difficult part of this. It's like I I, I kind of feel like you, you're trapped in the the situation of when Howard Jones joined Killswitch and you're like <laughs> yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Blood has been shed, <laughs> which is the pinnacle of this, and I have end of heartache. Yeah. And the two aren't, they're not the same band, yeah. but you've heard that other version of them. Yeah. And I, when I come to my grade, I will explain how I've managed to untangle and disassociate myself. Right, that. okay. It's difficult to, to not compare. Um, I think, for me, the, the, right towards the end of the album, there are a couple of tracks towards the end that maybe didn't grab me as much as the rest. Um, I, found, I found the title track... A little oh, bit under Plague Boys. I found it a little bit underwhelming that track. <gasps> I know. Get you to fuck. I I felt I felt like it was felt like it was building towards something that didn't really come for me. Um, the the closing track, just again that one was just kind of okay. I, I it just didn't hit me like a closing track. Like I, I wanted that big finish and I, I didn't quite get it on that one. Um, that aside, I am not complaining about a single other thing on this album. I think that the production is fantastic. As you said, it's modern, but it's got a bit of a there's some retro kind of feel in there as well. All Lots that, of character. It's all, the, it's all the kind of spacey, eerie, kind of kind of quasi Americana rockabilly sort of. So it's like you just imagine those big guitars with a. The, yeah. it, it has that feel about it. Yeah. It yeah, it's a really cool of, blend. And it reminds me of, uh, the, if you've got a Duncan bingo card, tick this one off and do a shot. Um, it has a David Lynch feel about it. Mm. And it reminds me of like stuff you would hear in Twin Peaks. Yeah. And, you know, it has that dreamy, yeah. weird... It's not shoegaze, but like you see if someone you see some illiterate, illiterate person out there musically was like that oh this is what shoegaze sounds like i could see how you'd make that leap you'd be fucking wrong yeah. but i could see why you would because it has that kind of dreamy kind mm-hmm. of spacey quality about it that if you were ill-informed that's what you think of but yeah. it sits in a the 80s is riddled with that it's kind of why i love that that decade yeah. for music yeah i know it's why a lot of people hate it but i think they they do they don't do a facsimile. They don't do an impression of it. You know mm. I mean? If if Great Pleasures existed as a band in the 80s releasing this sort of stuff, yeah. I think it would be as authentic as them releasing it just now. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, but aside from that, I think the I think the band sounded great on the album. Um, probably the most kind of cohesive they've sounded um, as a band. Um, you can hear they, they do get, you know, that slightly kind of tighter on, on each album and I think they've really they've really nailed it on this one. Um yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um I, I obviously we were big fans of the, the singles they dropped, but the, the rest of the album didn't disappoint. Um okay, so scoring of Plague Boys, what are you scoring this album? Right. So I said I would have to explain a little bit on okay. here. Um <laughs> and I do. We keep going back to Beast Milk and Climax, but it is the proto version of this, right? Yeah. It's the you know, it's the it's the initial interpretation. Yes, mm. they are different bands, but mm. you know, Beast Milk became great pleasures. Mm-hmm. So that's the that's the way I look at it. Climax is a five, right? It's always gonna be a five. It's an it's the easiest five you're ever gonna throw out there. Yeah. 
Dream Crash for me is E4. Motherboard is E3. And Grey Pleasures Plague Boys is E4.5. Mm. I think this is the closest they've got to... If this is the best album this band does, I mm. think they've done very well. Yeah. If they can go one step better than this... I would love to hear it, but I think the sound... I would let, see if this is the style that they wanted to stick with and just do albums in this oeuvre and this level. I'd be happy for that for the rest of their career because I think they do it so well. Yeah. Um, but it does also raise the question of they are getting more confident within all the releases they do. Then you never know. You, no. you never know. You never know. Um, and that's the exciting thing. But I think this is as close as they're going to get to the perfect yeah. interpretation of what the band has. So 4.5 is where I'm landing with this. Excellent. Um, yeah, I think when it came down to scoring this, I had to just separate and just score it on its on its own merits. You know, forget about Beast Milk and Climax, just score it on this one. Um, I think this is top tier grave pleasures. Um, if, I, if I'm super picky, I think the, the end of the album could have been a touch stronger for me but the rest of the album is fantastic. So still a high score for me. I'm going to join you on that 4.5 out of nice. 5. Um, I, I'm going to say this thing. I don't think they'll do another album that sounds like this. I have the feeling that the next one that they do will go in a different you avenue. Never you never I just, know. I get that feeling that they, they probably don't want to do the same album twice. Um, so I, I expect they'll, 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 they'll still have the key components but they'll take it in a different angle i think um okay so that is our review of grave pleasures and plague boys out on april 21st on century media links below to the band to the pre-order check them out um let us know what you think stick some comments in below once you've had a, heard of the, uh, had a listen to the album let us know what you think like you said i think we both see decisively did not disappoint like did like lived up to expectations and then some so yep for sure um, that's the review. Thank you for checking it out. We'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone.